Most important thing you could ever learn, we were here talking in my kitchen late at night. If I could go back in time and learn one thing, I'm gonna tell it to you right now. It's this, you can only pick one thing that you want out of life, and if you pick the wrong thing, you'll never really be successful. Let, let me back up. My mentor, Joel Salta, said, the worst thing in life is to get older and realize you got good at the wrong thing. And I see people that are very wealthy, but I don't admire them. I live here in Beverly Hills, there's billionaires all up and down the street. Doesn't mean I would trade lives for them. In fact, the best test is, I call it the exchange test. Would you trade lives? And the reason that almost anybody I meet, I wouldn't trade lives for them, it's not because they're not smart, it's not because they're not good people, it's because, one simple thing, they're optimizing for the wrong thing. So let's say you say, I want to be an entrepreneur. That's not something you should optimize for. That's ridiculous. Here's why. You have one life. Maybe we go to heaven or hell after. Maybe there's an afterlife. Maybe there, ha uh, maybe there isn't. I've never been there, so I can't speak on it. But I can tell you, you get one chance on this planet. And if you optimize for an entrepreneur, what about your health? What about love? What about happiness? I know miserable entrepreneurs that are fat, out of shape. I don't want to be them. I, I know a dude that, uh, not a close friend of mine, but a friend of an entrepreneur friend, and this guy's a billionaire, but he's so fat he can't get out of bed. He's $2 billion, he has a private 747 jet. So would I want to be him? No, he optimized for the wrong thing. He optimized to make $2 billion, but he forgot why would you want to have $2 billion if you don't have health? I always remember what Joel Salton said, nothing worse in life than realizing you got good at the wrong thing. That guy got good at the wrong thing. It's irrefutable, you cannot argue with that. Why would you give your health up to gain money? There's a saying that when people are young, they lose their health to get wealth, and when they're old, they use their wealth to get back their health. It's a circular logic, and circular in this case is illogical, it's stupid. People are stupid, most of the, if I could go back in time, I'd realize most people are lost. Literally, most people are lost. I don't, and I'm talking about the people who write, you know I, I got the biggest book club in the world, I know top authors and all these people, they might be smart in one specific domain, but if you look at their life, I wouldn't exchange for it. There's a few people that I've met that when I look back, I'm like, oh, you know one of them, Arnold Schwarzenegger, not everything, but he, he was healthy, he was strong, he changed the world, he, he made gyms hot. Gyms come from Arnold Schwarzenegger, he made that shit hot. All these gyms all over America, just from Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger. Now other people worked on it, but not like him. He motivated people, he became a self-made millionaire before 30. He wanted to act, he, acting's an art. He was an artist, he became, you know, maybe he wasn't the best actor in the world, but he's not bad. I was actually in his kitchen couple months ago, just like this, me and him talking, smoking cigars. He's a good actor. Like I said, he might be, not be, you know, Academy Award, but he got the good life. His son was there, his kids were there at his house. He's happy, he's friends, he's got social life. You gotta have health, wealth, love, happiness. If you at any point optimize for anything that doesn't involve all four of them, you're making the biggest mistake in the world. Entrepreneur people go, I want to become an entrepreneur. No, you don't want to become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is a means to an end. You don't want to live your life lifting weights. It's a means to an end. To put on muscle, to increase your metabolism, to change the direction of your telomere growth. You, you get older because the way your telomeres, your cells change, size. Lifting weights has been proven to reverse that. You want anti age that's why you lift weights. But you don't live a life to lift weights. If you met anybody and you said, what is your life for? Oh, I want to take a piece of steel and go like this. They're a fool. It's a means to an end. And the second in life you make the tool the end, you're like the carpenter whose goal is to hold a hammer, not create a house he can live in. You become, you, you hire somebody not to hold a hammer. The tool's irrelevant. If they could do it without it, I'm sure at some point in the future, they'll be able to build houses without hand, hammers. So they'll get rid of them. At some point, we might evolve as a society where you don't need entrepreneurs. 
there's some collective intelligence that works together. The smartest people coalesce and it's this non uh, single focus entrepreneurs. You might not need Bill Gates, you might not need Steve Jobs. In fact, some countries like Norway, Denmark, Scandinavia, they have a lot of great things and they don't have it exactly like America. I love America, I'm American, but I'm just saying, entrepreneurialism, capitalism, democracy, they're all an end, they're all a means to the end and there's only one end and that's a good life. Now everyone will define good life a tad bit differently. You know, for some people good life is you travel a lot, uh, but there's some common factors that all people must have. Every fucking person watching this, there's no argument. You must be relatively lean with your body fat. I'm gonna make this real blunt for people. You cannot be overweight. I don't care what anybody tells you. What will a smart scientist tell you? You gotta be lean. Now you don't have to be anorexic, because that's, but you have to be lean. So you have to optimize in order to get the good life, to have your hormones chugging, I mean, uh, churning at the right pace to be happy is very, it, it, your happiness is predicated on your hormonal balance. You get too much estrogen, you get too much testosterone, you get too much cortisol, too much estradiol, these things mess with you. So a lot of these uh, come, the simplest predictor of you having screwed up hormones are things like body fat. Now, again, I'm not saying everybody needs to look like a runway model. That's not even what you need to optimize for. But if that's not a big consuming part of your life, I don't give a shit if you live here in Beverly Hills. I'll have a better life than you. Guaranteed. fucking teed. You can make two billion, I'll make a hundred million, and I'll live long enough to enjoy it. I'm not talking about me specifically. All right? In fact, you can substitute you for me, you. Let somebody else make two billion and get so fat that they lay in a bed for the rest of their life. Let them do it. That ain't your concern. You can mention and lend a helping hand and try to guide them back, but like Alan Nation told me, don't try to teach a pig to fly. You can't do it and it bothers the pig. Most people aren't gonna listen to this advice. I've always said the best advice nobody will listen to. It's too good. <laughs> it's too good of advice. People are gonna get lost. I don't become an entrepreneur. Well, I've been an entrepreneur since I'm 16. I am qualified to tell you this. I have started many, many successful companies. Now, there's some entrepreneurs more successful than me, but I only judge them by good life scale. And very few entrepreneurs that I meet pass the good life. And you can even, it's not even me being judgmental. If I ask them, do you like your life? They're like, oh, I'm burned out, I'm dead. Blah, 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 blah. It's taking longer than I thought. So keep your health. Keep your health and make money a little slower. Love, happiness, social life. This one is even more important in many ways than health. If I had a choice between being overweight and having a lot of good people around me, I'd be overweight and have good people around me versus be super skin, you know, super lean, super fit, and nobody likes me. So your social skills is very important. And it's not just social skills. It's not just how to win friends and influence people. It's how to win friends and influence the right people. Because let's be honest here, if you've been on planet Earth for more than 10 or 15 years, you are highly and acutely aware of the fact that most people do not have your best interests at heart. We grow up, you, if you're talking to an evolutionary psychologist, there's a, a, a number, it's 150 people. We're optimized to have about 150 friends, family, relatives, acquaintances, and close friends that will have our back. That's it. Now they're spread out because we live in a world of mass transport, people spread all over the world. You're gonna, it's your job in life to find 150 people. It's a very famous number. Uh, you can Google it. It's a, a famous sociologist came up with the number. And it's about 150 is what your brain's optimized. The reason is, is you can keep track of 150 relationships and each of their relationships to the other 150 people. So it's actually, your, your brain is tracking 10,000 uh, combinations. But I won't digress into more advanced stuff. This is, I'm just trying to give it to you. This is, no school will tell you this. No professor will tell you this. For the most part, no religious person tells you. Definitely presidents, Hillary Clinton, presidential uh, candidate, Donald Trump, they will not tell you this. But 
if at the end of your life you look back and you go, you had a good life, you won. Now, I will tell you, finances do play a part in that. If you have de-optimized your financial life, whether it be you're a slave to somebody underpaying you, uh, not delivering value to you, whether you have a job that's not aligned with your personality, there, you know, there's genetic factors that tell you what career you should choose. Most people pick the wrong career. Why? Because nobody told them. I mean, it's, it almost makes me sick. There's parents out there telling their kids to become dentists so they'll make more money when the kid's artistic. No, 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 no. If you have kids and they're genuinely talented artists, make, let them be an artist. I had someone Snapchat me. I get five, 10,000 Snapchats a day. Somebody said, Ty, I want to be a, I've been a classical pianist since I was like eight and I'm like 25 and my parents are pressuring me to give it up because they say there's no money. I'm like, fuck them. Just because their parents don't mean they'll give you good advice. Trust me. Parents interests are not always aligned with their children. You don't believe me? Read evolutionary psychology textbook by Dr. David Buss. Parents have 50% of your genes, not a hundred percent. Only you have a hundred percent. Parents will often pick favorites. They will often want to live out their fantasies through you. They'll often be fear-based. Be a poor artist better than a wealthy dentist and you hate it. Now, I believe, and the good news for the parents is, you can become a classical pianist and using modern entrepreneurial skills and modern social media skills, I believe you can make a good living. You might not be the next Bill Gates. You will not be the next Warren Buffett if you're a classic uh, classical pianist. There's no chance. But who cares? You can still, for you, be experiencing the mental state of I'm living a good life, which is the only goal to optimize. All you people watch, I know tie in entrepreneurs uh, follow me, you guys are making 100 million. Doesn't mean I give a shit about you. Doesn't mean I envy you at all. I had a guy here the other day. I won't say who he is, a very wealthy guy, billion. I think he's almost a billionaire. I was eating um, and I had a chef bring me food. And he was like, why do you spend money on a chef, man? You could take that capital and you spend money on living a good life and you could take all that capital and you could make more money in your business. I said, yeah, but I got a better life than you. And we're friends. And he immediately recognized that I was right. And he laughed and he's like, you're right. And I said, what does it profit a man to have all the money in the world but eat shitty food? The first thing I do when I make money is eat better food. That's the most primal need of humans. Buy a better mattress. Fuck it. Let your business be slower. Don't be like, and people are out there telling you, ah, optimize. No, sleep on a fucking floor for 10 years. Well, there's a balance. You can be frugal, but you shouldn't. Don't be eating ramen. Are you people eating ramen five, 10 years? You fools. I don't care if you become the next Steve Jobs or not. First of all, Steve Jobs didn't live that long. And he said he didn't want to be the richest man in the graveyard. But he was. Now, he had a disease that probably anybody I could get. I'm not making fun of him. I'm using him as an example. If you let your health deteriorate and then you become the next Steve Jobs and you start Apple, which is now the largest market cap company in the world, who cares if you're dead? Nobody. You will be forgotten. You will be forgotten. People are forgotten. And even if you're not forgotten, who cares? You ain't alive. So enjoy. If you're watching this in your age 18, make sure you optimize for the day. And that's what I do. People say, what do you do? I said, optimize my day. Each day. I don't project out seven years from now. I might plan for seven years out. There's a difference. But you don't optimize for seven years out. You optimize for the moment. The only known thing. You know, I'm not the dumbest person in the world. I'm not the smartest. I've been in Mensa since I was six years old. I can hold my own intellectually. I challenge any, any person of any intellectual stature. You know, I recently talked to Richard Dawkins. I know these people that are smart. Disprove my theory. Show me why you should, when you're 19, make your life shit so that hopefully your life will be better at 40. Prove it. Why? And if you're a Richard Dawkins type person, you're gonna be an atheist. A lot of those guys are atheists. Not all of them. Christopher Hitchens. Well, then you believe that you could die. There's no fate. You could die at any moment. So why would you not optimize 419? 
And then once you get 20, you optimize for 20. Again, you can plan for the future and a wise person saves money for the future and all that stuff. All that common sense stuff still applies within the worldview and the frame that I'm giving you. But this is, and just take it to me, if you want, I, I will open the debate for any smart person to try to debate this with me. It's too strong of an argument to be beaten by anybody. I've read 10,000 books. I've read the great philosophers. I know Will Durant. I know Fred Aristotle, Socrates. I, I, you know, it was interesting, my grandma, I had a, my grandma was in La Jolla, the most uh, Nobel Prize winners in the world. She had me with the number one living philosopher in the world. Very fascinating guy. I think he might have died. He's like 80 or 90 years old. And so I've been around intellectual giants and I respect them. You can't beat my argument. Now, my argument goes back to, if for those of you who are philosophy majors, you know, there's Stoics, there's Epicureans. This sounds a little more Epicurean, which is eat, drink, be merry for tomorrow we die. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I am not Epicurean. I am not saying do cocaine. I'm not saying YOLO, you only live once. I'm saying you optimize for the moment, but in optimizing for the moment, you also predict that you'll probably be alive tomorrow. So you do too much cocaine, you're not optimizing for the good life because cocaine will increase your chance of, you know, fucking dying <laughs> for tomorrow. So it's a balancing act of long and short term. Most entrepreneurs, very long term. I've fallen in this trap. I'm as guilty as anybody. I'm telling you the hard way. I learned the hard way and I didn't learn as hard of a way because I had smart mentors. If you want to, uh, I don't know, become an artist, you better start painting today. You want to play piano? Get on it. Don't be doing this shit. Well, I don't know. I used to have a business partner who'd always tell me he's going to lose weight in three months. Three months. He was always like, I need about three months to gear up for it and stretch. I'm like, no, you don't. And I can predict you'll never do it. You optimize for right now. You watch this video, go do something. Go do something that brings you the good life. But no, there's certain objective things. Don't, because people become delusional about the good life. They say, well, the good life for me, Ty, doesn't entail physical health. Nah, really? Really? You want to get a disease and then tell me that doesn't ruin your quality of life? Now, if you already have the disease, then you have to optimize what, around what best you have. But if you can prevent it, and everybody eventually dies of a heart failure, just so you know. 100% humans die of heart failure. So eventually, everything I'm saying uh, gives out anyway. There's no perfect formula in an imperfect world. But there is what there is now. And what there is now is you can optimize today. And you a little bit optimize and think about tomorrow, and you a little bit think about seven years from now. But the four pillars, health, wealth, love, and happiness. Health is pretty simple in the modern world. You have to stay lean. You have to stay lean and relatively muscular as a man or a woman. You know, girls want good butts. Well, that's muscle. You don't need, as most women, although there's a lot of exceptions to this, don't want to be quite as muscular as a man. You know, a guy, your BMI should be around 24 to 25. For girls, it's a little bit lower, you know, BMI. You can look it up and calculate it. Now there's some variance for body types and whether you're a pro bodybuilder or a football player, but for the most part, you gotta have a little waist. If your waist as a guy is more than about 32 inches, unless you're a huge guy like Rome, you know that 6'6", 350 pounds, your waist gotta be under 32 inches for the most part. If you're a woman, it's even smaller. And that's not so that you can appear beautiful. I forget that. I'm not talking about societal norms, I'm talking about physiological norms. You gotta do it. If you aren't doing it, then you must put tremendous power into doing it. Even if your career uh, is pushed back, you make less money. Same with a lot of people have this thing, I won't find love because I'm working on myself. This is this myth that's being pushed around, just a garbage myth with no statistical proof. For the most part, all self-made billionaires were married young, so you can just, even though I'm not married, so I'm not the perfect example of this, I still am objective and will tell you the truth. Whether or not my life has, I, I have done a lot of things not perfectly. So I'm telling you the truth. All those people saying, well, I'm gonna work on myself. No, you're not. You're, what you're doing 
in the Hexaco personality test, which is the most scientific study of how humans are built emotionally. There's 26 facets, there's six main personality attributes, honesty, humility, emotionality, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and uh, openness to experience, and each of those break into four, and, and one of them breaks into six sub-facets. One of the facets is dependence and sentimentality, which are part of emotionality. To be happy, you have to be somewhat dependent. People will say, I'm gonna do it all my own. There was a great poet in the 1800s, he said, no one is an island. No one's an island. So you must attach yourself to good people. You should find love romantically relatively early in life. You're built that way. So if you're going, a lot of women, a lot of guys are like, I'm gonna get married at 40. Well, your emotionality, sentimentality, your hormonal make makeup will not be optimized for that. Probably the best time to get married is 25 to 30. Below that, divorce goes way up. If you get married at you know 16, 17, you can just look at the facts. But getting married, you know, a lot of women get married at 38. Well, at 38, if you want to have kids, and about 95% of women at one point will realize they want to have kids. So I'm not saying there's a lot of 20 year old girls that go, I never want kids. The odds are, as your brain changes, as your hormones change, as estrogen levels change as you get into different parts. 95% of women who can have children will have children. The problem is if you wait till 38, 39, it's a little more complicated, you know? So if you are watching this and you're older, you don't need to be discouraged because you can just optimize for where you are and nobody's perfect and you can still have a good life. But for those of you who still got the chance, you know, optimize to find and become a person who can find real love. And we live in a world that's very detached. And I live with the Amish for two and a half years. I've seen that, you know, people are like, why do you live? When everybody else was partying and even entrepreneurs making money, if my friends in Silicon Valley started making money in 19 or 20, I was living on a farm for 10 years. Not quite 10, eight years. And the reason was I was learning other things that had nothing to do with money. And I would never change that. Even if I could have got made money earlier, I wouldn't because I, because of what I learned from those role models and those mentors, I have a better life than almost any entrepreneur I meet. And I'm not saying that cocky, I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that to inspire you that if you follow smart principles, you will get a reward. And you are probably can have a much better life than me. I'm not the best at this, but I'm focused on the right target. And I can tell you that with all certainty. The life, the good life is the, the only noble target to seek. It'll help society because as you make your life optimized, genuinely, you rub off on other people and you optimize their life too. When you only seek money, you're gonna create a world where everybody only optimized for maximum profit, which is where McDonald's comes from, which is no good for society. You know, that's where mega corporations, you know, that's where tobacco comes from. People optimizing to make the most money. But nobody's thinking at the end of the day, do you want to be 75? It's even Ray A. Kroc. He started McDonald's, 52 years old. He started McDonald's. I look up to him as an entrepreneur for his skills and technical, but I look, his goal wasn't noble. He ended up, you know, and you know, it's a sad thing. His kids died of diabetes before he did. No one should bury their own kids if they can help it. But if you create a world where everybody eats junk food, your kids might eat junk food. Now, I don't know the story, so I'm not going to judge that specific thing, but that's the general pattern that will happen. And so at the end of the day, what do you end up doing? Pick a career that will bring you the good life. Not focused on money. Every smart person should not become a venture capitalist or a hedge fund person in New York. I don't give a shit. You, these hedge fund people, you know, junior hedge fund people figure out how to make eight, nine hundred thousand dollars a year and everyone's like, oh, that's so awesome. They live shitty lives. I lived in New York for one summer. People, I saw them wake up at four in the morning and go to Subway in suits at midnight. Oh, that's a great life. I would love to do that. Spend my 20s burning out, causing recessions, which is what a lot of these financiers did by creating bizarre securities that really fucked up the American economy. And that's it. Nah, man. You know, my mentor, Joel Salatz, and he eventually became a millionaire. But he got the good life. He's got health, wealth, love, happiness. He changed the world. He enjoys the moment. He has beautiful farms, you know, land. He's got, he married his high school sweetheart. 
They're still happily married. He's got kids. His grandkids still around him. Like, that's what you want. <laughs> Everything else. And, and don't believe the bullshit. Because it's easy to make a social media video that makes other shit look glamorous. But at the end of the day, we haven't even talked about happiness. Do you wake up feeling energized? Warren Buffett, I like him, even though he made a lot of money. Because some people, you might be somebody built to make a lot of money. I'm not poo-pooing people and make money. I make a lot more money than the average person. I'm just saying it's, it's, a, it's not the goal. It's a tool I use to get the real goal. I like what makes me happy. I like having homes around the world. Because I like to travel, but I don't like sleeping in hotels. So I have homes in La Jolla and San Diego, and I own a farm on the East Coast. And I have multiple homes in, in, in LA here. And I've got homes in Europe. For me, that's the good life. And I'll use money as an instrument to get that good life. And I try to bring a lot of other people into that good life too, with me. I show them, I'm like, there's a kid, Christopher Lopez, a few years ago when I made that Here in My Garage video, he saw that video and he walked 40 miles from the ghetto of, uh, he was in Long Beach, Compton area, and he walked to my house in the Hollywood Hills, found me um, by, I'm not sure if you know, he found me, trial and error, figured out from the view, and, and he came up to me and he said, man, I'm homeless, I, uh, I, I kind of live with my grandpa, my grandpa's dying of cancer, will you help me? And I it gave him a job, and I said, you can work for me for six to 12 months, and I'll help you get started. And uh, so I did that six to 12 months, and then actually ended up working a little bit longer. And I just saw him the other day at the airport. I kind of lost touch with him. And he's like, dude, I wanted you to know, like, I saw what you were doing. I learned how to, he saved the money he made working for me, and he invested uh, in some, he's a, he was Mexican, and his family was from a little village in Mexico, and he built like a fourplex, like a little apartment building. Borrowed some money from a bank, used the down payment of the money he had saved, and he said, I'm now financially, he gets enough money, I don't know what, I would guess it's two or $3,000 a month, so he's not rich, but he's financially independent at 22, 23 years old. So that's good. That's better than the hedge fund person that wastes 10 fucking years of their life hating their life and doing bullshit. I don't care how much money you make, it don't impress me at all. At all. You know what impressed me? People are in good shape physically. Like they're lean, they're strong, they're healthy. Number one, people are financially independent. That's different numbers. For me at this point in my life, because I have employees and stuff, I gotta make a lot more money to be financially independent. Christopher Lopez, two, three grand is financially independent. Third, a lot of love, a lot of good people around. I got a lot of good people around, you know? My grandma, my mom, my my brother, some of my brothers work for me, my cousins work for me. I see them, I got good childhood friends. One of the people who runs one of my companies is, we've been friends since I was two years old. He has my back, I got all old friends. I don't have, me no conversate with the fake. That, that the hip hop song, that part, I got that part too. And, and you can do it too. Uh, again, I'm not bragging, I'm showing you what I wish somebody had showed me. And nobody teaches this shit in school. You're learning about isosceles triangles, and fucking retarded stuff. You should burn down most of the education system in most countries in the world. It, there's great teachers and there's people with good hearts, but pff, you talk about blind leading the blind. We haven't even gotten to happiness. You can objectively measure happiness. What's your cortisol levels like? You can do a saliva test. You spit in a vial four times in a day. It'll show you your cortisol. Your cortisol should go high. Most people are in stage one, two, or three cortisol exhaustion. Once cortisol, uh, once adrenals are exhausted, that's the gatekeepers of your immune system, so it'll mess with your health. You'll, if you're a guy, it'll tie up testosterone. It'll push up estrogen, which bind. You have your total testosterone. You have your free testosterone. It'll bind it. For women, same thing. It'll mess with your hormones. So you can't be happy. People are very stressed. Most people don't know how to meditate. Most people can't, most people are ADD, most people are full of anxiety and fearfulness. Most, a tremendous amount of the population is now on pharmaceutical drugs. And some people need to be on it, but most don't. They gotta be on it because they're trying to fix the problem that they could have, if their sixth grade teacher or their parents had just told you this damn talk. It makes me sick that I have to say this talk. It truly does. 
There's so many smart people in the world, but ain't nobody using their intelligence for the most important thing. Why the hell are we on planet Earth? And what should you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I'm telling you, this is the real keys. You want the keys? I give you the fucking keys. Everything else, a bullshit key. Really. Find what you like. Find the people you like to do it. Get lean. Get strong. Get fit. Objectively. Not, don't let your friends whisper in your ear, you look great, girlfriend. Nah, well, shit's objective. It's not subjective. I'm not talking about beauty. I'm talking about health. A doctor can tell you. If you are 80 pounds overweight, you are not optimizing your life. And I'm not making fun of you. I'm encouraging you. Fix it. It's all fixable. As long as you have breath, you can fix shit. As long as you have breath. And if you don't have breath, you're watching this video. So it goes without saying. Everybody here should have hope. Everybody. Well, people aren't motivated. Because we live in a world of bullshit motivators. Bullshit motivators. Bullshit motivators. Saying Wolf of Wall Street. You could be Wolf of... Look at Wolf of Wall Street type people. You think they're happy? You think you really want their life? You know one thing? I was born more in the streets. My dad's from Harlem. I was born in Long Beach, Compton area. And so... I was saw all the media and this and this and the rap and all oh, it, oh, it's all about get the Lamborghini and this and that and I've gotten those so I can tell you I'm fucking qualified I am qualified I did not inherit my money I am qualified I am an entrepreneur since I was 19 my first real company uh, and I am qualified to tell you that what I'm saying is the straight dope. This is the real dope. Everything else is that black tar heroin. Scramble your brain. You follow this, you be good. And if people tell you otherwise, they don't know what they're talking about. Simple. People tell you take the job that takes the most money. Well, if you got two equal jobs that you like equally, then take the one that gives you the most money. But never pick the wrong career over money or you will be the richest man in the graveyard. Be like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says every day, he's 88 years old, I think. He was born in 1925. No, no, no. I forget what year. A little earlier than that. And he says every day, he wakes up and tap dances to work. He loves what he does. If you don't have the tap dance effect in your life and you're following some path that doesn't, won't most likely bring you, you're a fool. Don't be a fool. Literally. We live in a world of, unfortunately, where you and I got tricked by fools. So, don't believe what dumb people say. And when I say dumb, I'm not talking about IQ. Because some of the biggest fools you ever meet will have the highest IQs. I can tell you that. There's a great book on this by a guy that kind of mentors me. IQ is a domain-specific advantage in human evolution. It doesn't bring the best life. And high IQ people are correlated with lower happiness. So you don't even need to be the smartest person in the room. You don't need to have 170 IQ or even 150 or even 140. You probably need to optimize your IQ to around 120 to 130. After that, the life effect is very negligible. So, yeah, that's, my, that's what I wish people had told me. And the sad thing is that I ever had to shoot this video because why should I have to shoot it? Should have been, thousands of people should have shot a video like this and given it to you. I guess maybe the only reason I'm qualified, I mean that I should shoot this video is because I'm qualified. I've seen both sides. I've, I've chased after entrepreneur, I've chased after money, I've tested, I'm a mad scientist. Most anything you can think of, I probably tested. And I can tell you, this is the culmination of those years of advice right there in one little damn video for free. Sometimes people go, you don't give everything away for free. I just gave you the best damn thing for free right there. That's all you need. You can just watch this one video. It's not enough to watch it, you gotta do it. Optimize for today. Before you go to bed, optimize. What would make you, you know, sometimes it's simple stuff. I started going to movies. I like movies. I like going with some friends. It's a good place to chill out, relax. It makes me feel happier. So I go to movies a lot. I have friends that'll be like, well, you know, you'll make more money if you don't. I'm like, shit, I already got enough money. <laughs> what are 
I'm sitting in the 18,000 square foot house or 17,000 square foot house right now with, I got a Rolls, brand new custom made Rolls, Lamborghini, 458 Spider. I got a Maserati in there. I got other shit. I, I've already done private jets and that and whatever. I own nightclubs and all that. I'm qualified. Trust me. You won't find, I have never found anybody more qualified to give this talk than what I'm talking about right now. I tried it all. Now, I haven't tried everything, and you should learn from other people. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person or the wisest person, but on this subject, I am qualified. And uh, if you don't think I'm qualified and you have a cogent, real argument against anything I'm saying, I'm glad to hear it. Leave a comment. As long as, you know, most people who comment are bullshit. You know, they're like people who talk shit, but you put, you say, come in the gym with me, come in the ring with me, they fade away. But if you have a real argument that has substance to it, let me hear. What else would you optimize for? You wanna be an entrepreneur or you wanna have a good life? Only be an entrepreneur if it brings you a good life. You wanna pump iron because you love iron? You know, you got some mental problem? You like iron? <laughs> you like iron? <laughs> that makes no sense. Like weights? No, you lift weights so that you can be healthy. So. That's it, man. There you go. The life manifesto. Maybe I'll call this video. <sighs> Better go to bed. It's a lot of ranting.